A warm welcome to your Barbados Today Evening News Update. Thanks for joining us. Barbados is COVID-19 free at this stage. An upbeat health minister, Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick, today declared that it's been a month since the island recorded the case and all patients have recovered. He was speaking at a news conference at Ilara Court this morning. We are now on day 35 without any local transmission of COVID-19. And even better news, all persons who were in isolation have been discharged, so there are no confirmed cases that we are still treating at the isolation facility at Harrison Point. Also important is the fact that all persons who were repatriated on the flights from the United States, United Kingdom and Canada have been discharged from quarantine. And this is indeed good news. But this good news did not happen just like that. In spite of the support, the financial and other support and the leadership of the Prime Minister and Cabinet, in spite of the efforts of the Permanent Secretary, the Chief Medical Officer and the hardworking staff at the Ministry of Health and Wellness, in spite of the all-of-government gov all approach, we could not have reached this point unless we had the cooperation and the support of the ordinary Barbadian man and woman. The welcome news paved the way for Prime Minister Mia Motley to praise Barbadians for complying with the protocols, and she announced they would be rewarded with the removal of all curfews from July 1. She's confident the island is ready. And in light of the level of maturity and responsibility that I have seen you exhibit over the last three months, we think, as a government, that it is safe for us to get on with our lives as we did before COVID-19 reached our shores. Cautiously, but get on. It is time to reward good behavior, but very carefully so, as we fully understand the consequences of being reckless and irresponsible, and you see them on television elsewhere. Very soon, the protocols governing our ability to socialize, I will announce, and we will implement. Rest assured, that we will be monitoring them, as I said, and I have no fear of repeating myself, to make sure that people understand that you must comply with them all of the time. Attorney General Dale Marshall also outlined a number of critical changes. When the new COVID directive starts on at midnight on Monday night, all daycare centers will be allowed to reopen to full functionality. In addition to that, we feel that we are not at the point where we can allow sporting events to take place with spectators. Now, obviously, we will still have stringent protocols in relation to spectators enjoying those events, but they will largely be limited to physical distancing and sanitizing, things of that sort. Obviously, for indoor sporting activities, there will be density requirements to consider. But once more, our, our avid fans can go out, enjoy a game of cricket, uh, watch a game of basketball, football, road tennis and the like. In relation to entertainment and public events, those, those events were limited to a maximum capacity of 250 persons. After consulting extensively with the health authorities, we have decided that we will increase that limit to 500. Meanwhile, the Grantley Adams International Airport will be back in business come July 12. Air Canada will be the first commercial flight to touch down on that day. They will be followed by British Airways on July 18, JetBlue on July 25, and Virgin Atlantic on August 1. Tourism Minister Kerry Simmons outlined the protocols in place for travellers. Before you embark on your journey to Barbados, you must within 72 hours of the commencement of travel do a COVID-19 PCR antigen test. And that test must be then accredited by a laboratory which will be, um, or the accreditation of the laboratory will be by the Ministry of Health and Wellness here. Uh, the standard of that test must be ISO or CAP, or in the case of the United Kingdom, UKAS, um, compliant, or the equivalent thereof. And the specifics of that will obviously be made available as we do the, the public um, education and awareness program. After passing that test, 
you will obviously get a certificate that indicates that you're COVID negative and you're expected to fill out online your ED card, which will also carry within it, um, the ED card now will have a new look and it will carry within it a number of questions which relate specifically to issues relating to personal health and symptoms. And once you have filled that out online and submitted it, you get an exchange sent back to your email address. Most people will walk with it on their, 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 their telephone, a barcode, which once you arrive into the island and you have your certificate indicating that you've passed the COVID-19 test, you just clear immigration and you are allowed into Barbados. In other news, major changes are coming to the local car dealership market as authorities seek to put the brakes on irregularities and create a level playing field for both new and used car dealers. Commerce Minister Dwight Sutherland announced the move today following a tour of the National Automotive Sales and Service Company Limited, NASCO. The changes come after NASCO officials claimed more than a year ago that some third-party vehicle importers were cheating the system. We are in the process of implementing a vehicle policy or legislation which would indeed uh, address some of the irregularities and anomalies. For instance, we would have seen last year the importation of some new Hilux vehicles into this country, not by NASCO, but by other importers. And we recognize that the, the regime for, for imports, um, Hilux would have been classified as a truck. And based on regulations by government, we were not issuing import licenses for these vehicles because they were classified as trucks. I think it, it was 8704 tariff code that was being used to regulate in terms of trucks coming in. But we, we think the time has come for us to bring Hilux and those vehicles that people use as, as trucks. We believe the time has come for us to give to issue import licenses for all vehicles coming in. Because what has happened, and I said, we've seen some of those, those vehicles landing here and, and, and being sold at some twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars less. There's regional and international news after this short break. Welcome back to Regional News. There's a fresh call to merge regional carriers Liat and Caribbean Airlines. It's coming from former CARICOM Commissioner Dr. Patrick Antoine. He suggests it's the best way forward for the two carriers that have suffered a major fall off in business as a result of COVID-19. In the case of Cal, certainly under pressure, but, but you can perhaps, uh, as they say in Trinidad, COE for a little longer. Liat is under tremendous financial pressure being threatened, of course, that if we don't get a return to normalcy soon, um, it, it could in fact jeopardize the viability of the airline. And this is where I think we need to, again, call for more regionalism. This is the time for us, without, without delay, to consider a merger between Cal and Liat. I mean, this has been on the cards for a long time. Uh, we've heard the discussions, but we need to ensure that we use this COVID times to do some of the things we should have done before. On the international front, the U.S. Infectious Disease Chief says the nation has a serious problem as 16 states reel from a spike in COVID-19 cases. He urged Americans to be more responsible. I think what we're missing in this is something that we've never faced before, is that a risk for you is not just isolated to you. Because if you get infected, you are part, innocently or inadvertently, of propagating the dynamic process of a pandemic. So if you get infected, you will infect someone else who clearly will infect someone else. We know that happens because the reproduction uh, element of the virus is not less than one. So people are infecting other people. And then ultimately you will infect someone who's vulnerable. 
Now, that may be somebody's grandmother, grandfather, uncle who's on chemotherapy, aunt who's on radiation or chemotherapy, or a child who has leukemia. So there is what I call, and, and again, I just want to bring this out without making it seem that anybody's at fault. You have an individual responsibility to yourself, but you have a societal responsibility because if we want to end this outbreak, really end it, and then hopefully when a vaccine comes and puts the nail in the coffin, we've got to realize that we are part of the process. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.